In a world of games that are bleak, miserable and violent, I've always been able to rely on Nintendo and Hell's lovable, fluffy pink ball to provide a bit of imaginative whimsy and playful joyousness. The very first game to feature the versatile pink vacuum, the Game Boy Bard Kirby's Dreamland, was a little too simple. The next follow-up, however, the game that introduced Kirby's copy abilities unfortunately came a little too late in the system's life cycle. Many had already moved on to 16-bit gaming with the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo. Unfortunately, that does mean that Kirby doesn't quite have the magnetic draw that other Nintendo characters like Mario have. Uh, since then, he's been in a number of games spanning multiple genres. He's been in pinball, puzzle games, mini-game collections, even appeared as a giant ball of yarn, and of course, he's one of the favorites in Smash Bros. I've always had a soft spot for his traditional platform outings, though, um, as we saw in Kirby's Dreamland, Kirby Triple Deluxe, Return to Dreamland, that stick to his roots as a platforming star. That's exactly what Kirby Star Allies does, though it does do a few things to change the formula up. It starts off as every Kirby game should in the pastel, brightly colored dream world. Some dark ritual is spread in a various evil everywhere, and for some reason, Kirby's perpetual nemesis King DDD and his army of Waddle Dees are gathering up all of Dreamland's food. Uh, Kirby sets off to DDD's castle, and he discovers that his hammer wielding arch frenemy isn't his usual self. A fiery purple heart, which is part of this dark curse, has him under its spell. Uh, naturally, it's up to Kirby to vanquish this curse, so of course it is. Um, Kirby games have never really been known for the narrative impetus, so you can ignore the story. Uh, Kirby's not alone this time though, and the carnation Hugh Hoover has a few friends with him. In addition to his usual ability to suck up enemies and copy their abilities, Kirby can now befriend his foes by throwing a heart at them. He can recruit up to three friends to help him through the game's various levels, who are controlled either by the CPU or by real people. Yes, you can even enlist the help of King DDD or Meta Knight by um, splitting Joy-Cons or pairing up extra controllers. Up to four people can play for some pretty manic couch co-op. Of course, it's best played with real people, but the AI is pretty competent. What makes it a little different though is that Kobe and his newly acquired chums can combine their powers to create new and interesting ones. Uh, as an example, you can if you're, if you're Kirby and you're wielding a sword, you can have one of your friends uh, blast fire onto that and you'll get yourself a nice fiery sword that does extra damage. Uh, you can combine things like ice abilities with uh, the rock one and you'll get uh, a, one of those curling curling blocks that uh, it's an icy thing that flies all over the screen. Um, and you know, it can be used to push levers and... It's in combining all of these abilities where most of Star Allies fun presents itself. Using the right combination of powers to find hidden items makes each level a bit of a puzzle. You'll have to use unique combinations to find the elusive rainbow puzzle pieces, uh, healing items and triggers for extra stages. There are also a couple of new abilities for Kirby to copy, including uh, a new artist one that's a little tricky to get um, a hold of it at first. You get a spider one that gives him control of webs. You've got a broom one that has him sweeping up leaves. Uh, he's also got um, one that gives him control of a, of a pole. Uh, it's a little reminiscent of Journey to the West, I guess. Um, but uh, they, they, they expand his repertoire nicely, and as always, they've got a little more depth than you'll see or that, that you'll guess from just the surface of everything. Um, you know, they give Kirby air attacks, ground attacks, and other ways of dealing with the usual perils of platforming. Uh, Star Allies also plays in something new with friend abilities to activate those uh, players like to find uh, uh, have a full team of four when they come across a four player platform and ju jump on that and um, our hapless heroes transform into different things you might become a bridge for other characters to cross or a friend train that plows through enemies crushes everything in its way um, to help break the regular pace of platforming and inject a bit of variety when they do appear now um, Kirby games are usually unchallenging, uh, and the challenge that does exist comes in finding hidden collectibles. Here though, everything feels a little too easy. The hidden puzzle blocks aren't especially obscured, and uh, the constant barrage of attacks that you get from CPU-controlled allies makes coming up against enemies largely inconsequential. And that's unfortunately true for the bosses as well. While favorites like uh, Guardian of Forest Wispy Woods and uh, Meta Knight our, our bosses, along with a couple of other other things that you come across, they they can be beat, beaten by pure brute force. Some bosses uh, actually require a different combination of attacks to to beat at the at, the, at their best, 
But the, you don't really need to figure any of this out because you and your allies will just beat the hell out of everything. Um, outside of the story mode itself, Star Allies has two minigames that I unlocked from the start. You've got Chop Champs, which is a pretty simple minigame that's about chopping down trees quickly. There's also Star Slam Heroes, which is uh, Kobe and friends whacking meteors with a bat. They can both be played with motion controls or with traditional buttons. Once you've beaten the game, there are a couple of other modes that present themselves. There's one that lets you replay missions without Kirby, using any of his allies instead. And then there's also a time boss rush mode that lets you select a team of four. And then you've got to rush through the bosses and you uh, It's definitely vibrant and it's fun, but I feel it's missing the sort of spark that makes many other Kirby games like kind of Robobot and Epic Yarn um, so much more than just regular platforming games. Uh, if you're looking for a breezy, polished multiplayer game to play with your friends, then Star Allies is a pretty good choice. But if you're looking for something that's really inventive and breaks out of the traditional Kirby mold, you'll probably end up being underwhelmed. Uh, to give it a score out of 10, I would absolutely give this a 7. It's, it's fun, it's polished, it's worth playing, but it's not going to blow minds. And, um, and that's it. Kirby Star Allies, 7 out of 10. Thanks for listening, if you have listened. And um, please like and subscribe, I guess. Cheers.